What are we doing? All right, let's start with the truck. This truck is driving down the road at a constant 25 meters per second. Down the road a ways, there's a bush. And hiding behind that bush is a police car. Now the police car sees the truck coming down the road, and the truck is going too fast. It's speeding. So as soon as the truck passes the bush, the police car turns on its lights and pulls out onto the road, accelerating from rest at 5 meters per second squared. What we're going to solve for in this problem is the total time it takes for the police car to catch the speeding truck. To do this, we're going to look at the motion of the speeding truck. We're also going to look at the motion of the police car. We'll look at our five kinematic variables for both the speeder and the police car. The truck is always traveling at 25 meters per second, which means it has an acceleration of zero. The police car, on the other hand, is starting at rest and is going to accelerate at 5 meters per second squared. Typically, when solving a problem with a single object, we need to know three of the five kinematic variables in order to solve the problem. In this problem, with the speeder and the police car, we don't know three of the kinematic variables for either of the vehicles. So what we're going to do is take a look at the displacement as a function of time for each vehicle. So first we're going to look at the speeder. We're going to use the displacement equation, and we're going to fill the known values into the displacement equation to come up with an expression for the displacement as a function of time. Here we see the displacement as a function of time is 25t. We're going to go through a similar process for the police car using the displacement equation and we'll find the displacement as a function of time for the police car is 2.5t squared. Now to better understand what is happening in this problem we're going to graph both the velocity versus time and position versus time for each of the vehicles. Looking at the speeder first, the speeding truck is traveling at 25 meters per second at all points in time. So on our velocity versus time graph, we'll see a horizontal line with a magnitude of 25 meters per second. On our position versus time graph, we'll see a steady increase in, in position starting at a value of zero and increasing with a slope of 25. Looking at the police car, we know the police car is steadily accelerating at 5 meters per second squared. So we're going to see a diagonal line on our velocity versus time graph and a parabola on our position versus time graph. Now you'll notice on our velocity versus time graph, the velocities of the two vehicles intersect at some point in time. Realize that intersection is not when the police car catches the speeder. That's when the police car and the speeder are traveling the same speed. Looking at our position versus time graph, there's an intersection of those two functions. That intersection represents the point in time when the police car and the speeder are at the same position, or in this problem, have gone through the same displacement. So to solve for this point in time, we're going to set the displacement versus time for the speeder equal to the displacement versus time for the police car. We'll substitute in our displacement functions, then do a little bit of algebra, and we'll find it's going to take the police car 10 seconds to catch the speeder.
All right, let's start with the train. Choo -choo. And that train is 100 meters long. The train is traveling forward at 10 meters per second. Driving down the road alongside the train is a truck. The truck is traveling forward at 30 meters per second. <laughs> what we're trying to find in this problem is the total time it takes for the truck to pass the train. In order to solve this problem, we're going to need to look at both the motion of the truck and the motion of the train. To help us understand what's going on in this problem, we're going to graph the position versus time of both the train and the truck. Starting with the truck, we're going to lay out all five kinematic variables. Because the truck is starting at a different position than the train, we're not as concerned with displacement of both objects in this problem as we are with the position of both the truck and the train. So rather than looking at displacement for the truck, we're going to look at both the initial and final positions of the truck. Because the truck is traveling down the road at a constant velocity, that means the acceleration is zero. And therefore, the initial and the final velocity are both always going to be 30 meters per second. We're going to say the truck starts at a position of zero and continues down the road at 30 meters per second. Using the position versus time function rather than displacement, we can generate a function for the position of the truck at any point in time. That function is given by 30t. If we graph that function, 30t on our position versus time graph, we'll see a diagonal line with a slope of 30. Moving on to the train, we're again going to set up our five kinematic variables. But again, we're not going to want to look at the displacement of the train as much as we're going to want to look at the position of the train. We're going to use the same position versus time function for the train. Just like the truck, the train is not accelerating. So the train will always be traveling at 10 meters per second with an acceleration of zero. Because the train is 100 meters long, the front edge of the train is going to start at an initial position of 100 meters. <laughs> Plugging these values into our position function gives us a position versus time of 100 plus 10t. Now that we have the position versus time function for the train, we can plot that function 100 plus 10t on our position versus time graph. Note that the position of the train is initially 100 meters ahead of the truck. Now the two lines cross at a point, and where those two lines cross, that represents when the front edge of the truck has caught the front edge of the train. <laughs> and that's the point in time we're trying to solve for. Mathematically, all we're trying to find is the point where the function 30t is equal to the function 100 plus 10t. So we're going to take our two position versus time functions and set them equal to each other. Setting the position of the truck equal to the position of the train, we do a little bit of algebra and find it takes five seconds for the truck to pass the train. The important takeaway from this problem is that when we wanted to find the time it took for the truck to pass the train, we needed to look at the positions versus time for each of the objects because displacements could not be set equal to each other. Ultimately, the truck had to travel 100 meters farther than the train in this whole problem.
Okay, we're gonna start with two cars driving down the road, side by side. <laughs> now both of these cars are initially traveling at 20 meters per second. At some time of zero and position of zero, both of the cars are going to start to accelerate forward. This car is going to accelerate forward at five meters per second squared. This car is going to accelerate forward at only four meters per second squared. What we're gonna solve for in this problem is the distance between the two cars after 10 seconds. It's easy enough to see that this red car is going to accelerate at a greater rate, and therefore it's going to travel farther down the road in these 10 seconds than this blue car, which is only accelerating at four meters per second squared. But what we're gonna do is use the displacement equation to look at how far each car is going to travel down the road in these 10 seconds. So first let's look at the displacement of this red car. Using the displacement equation, we're gonna plug the values given to us in the problem into the formula. We find the red car is gonna travel 450 meters down the road in 10 seconds. For the blue car, we use the same displacement equation and plug the values for the blue car into our function. We find the blue car travels 400 meters down the road. The distance between the two cars after 10 seconds is simply the difference in these displacements. And we find the distance between the two cars is 50 meters. Of course, as always, to help us understand what's going on in this problem, let's graph the motion of the cars. Okay, on our velocity versus time graph, looking at the blue car first, it starts with a velocity of 20 meters per second and speeds up for 10 seconds at four meters per second squared. So we'll see a steady increase in velocity up to a velocity of 60 meters per second. The red car is going to start at the same initial velocity. However, it's going to accelerate at a greater rate. The slope of this line is steeper because the acceleration of this car is greater. On our position versus time graphs, we'll see our blue car start with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second and accelerate forward, which on a position versus time graph looks like a parabola. You'll notice the slope here is not initially zero because the car was initially moving. For our red car, we'll see it's going to also start at the same initial velocity, but move farther forward. You'll notice the difference in these two positions is the 50 meters between the two cars after 10 seconds. <laughs> 